Ray Borg, thank you for the time, sir. And I believe early September, you, you got a pretty big date uh, coming. I think early September it's going to be a good day. A long, long time in the making. Long time. So, I don't even know where to begin with these questions. I'm just so happy. I mean, I've been watching you fight for so long. <laughs> How does it feel to obviously be one step closer to your ultimate dream? It's, it's amazing, man. Especially, especially the people around me. Especially the people in the Mexico scene who have seen me grow up. Even from, you know, a little 13-year-old jiu-jitsu kid who just started off at grappling tournaments and doing all the local grappling tournaments. And now, you know... Pursuing my dreams and about to rewrite history on September 9th. When was the last time you looked at that first interview? And I'm talking about your first interview. I've seen it before. We're talking about grappling tournaments. There's no facial hair. You're like 13 years old. As you know how funny that is? Is that me and my wife Amanda were actually watching it two days ago. <laughs> I forgot what we were looking for. And it just kind of happened to stumble upon them. I was like, wow. I was like 13 years old doing an interview about Jiu Jitsu. So it was, it's insane, man. This whole ride has been crazy. It's been a blessing. You know, a lot of ups, a lot of downs. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just amazing that I'm here. All right, ups and downs. We'll start with how, how did you deal with all this copulous drama? Uh, you look like you're going to fight a DJ. TJ's jumping in. And obviously, a situation totally out of your hands. Same, same way I deal with every problem, you know? I, I, uh, I just overcome it. I just go over it. I hurdle over all these obstacles, all these little little things happening on the outside, inside, no matter where they be. I just do what I do best and I uh, overcome the adversity and I just keep moving forward, man. The whole situation with the whole TJ, everything. I just kept moving forward, whether it was going to be DJ or not. I just stayed positive, kept moving forward. That's what's carried with me throughout my whole career and uh, you know, things happen to look up for me. Was there any feeling of, are they sure, once they gave you this date and this opportunity, or no, you just signed the contract, went with it? Well, they gave me the date, and it was kind of like, all right, well, I'm gonna supposed to be getting ready for a fight September 9th, and who knows if it's going to happen, because I actually found out about it way before it was announced. It was talked about to be September 9th for a while, but then, you know, it started to drag along, and it was going to look like the whole... Uh, Seattle card again where it was supposed to be me in Seattle and then the whole thing tanked and they told us September 9th and it looked like it was about to tank again and then you know uh, I was told that it might be in October and then literally the day after I was told it was supposed to be in October you know we got the contract to fight in uh, September <laughs> so do you feel confident in the camp you've been able to put together with all these timeline changes that have taken place yeah I feel amazing you know I've uh, I've really created a great camp I've uh, surrounded myself with a lot of great coaches, a great gym, great training partners for this fight, and um, I really feel like I'm in the right spot, and I have the right people behind me to lead me to uh, deep throwing DJ. Where do you succeed that others have failed? Uh, you know, my, my tenaciousness, man. He, if you really look at DJ and the people he's fought, he's never fought anybody with my scrambling abilities. Tim Elliott was the closest thing to my type of scrambling, and we've seen how that went, and Tim Elliott, you know, almost damn near beat him and um, it's it wasn't as clean as my scrambling and you know I definitely feel like I have a different type of speed a different type of mentality more than anything you know he's he has never look at everybody's fought he has never fought anybody as young as me he's never fought anybody as hungry as me no one as fast as me no strong as me you know I definitely feel like youth is gonna play on my side and, and you know timing just is gonna align perfect on September when you look back to the Formiga win where do you feel that took you and what do you think that said to everybody else that's really in the, in the know? Um, beating Formiga was, was a big step for me. Not just for myself, but just for for everybody to know that I I am legit. I am a legit contender. You know, most people who are uneducated on the internet think that I'm ranked like 10th and I've never fought anybody in the top 10. Formiga was ranked 3 and he was, you know, at one point considered the best flyweight in the world. And, you know, I went in there and I shut him down. Uh, you know, it came out of that last round, I believe, and I showed how much more I wanted, and I beat him up the, the end of the third round, and it was it was a great win for myself because it it made me realize that okay, I'm I'm ready for DJ. For Miga, McCall, DJ, you've watched this flyweight division develop as it's developed through MMA. What is it like for you to be competing with these guys and being at this level, such a young age? It, it's it is truly insane because every fighter 
so far that I've either been scheduled to fight recently or have fought. I've watched him since I was a 14 year old kid. For me, I knew who he was when he fought on call in Tai Chi Palace. I watched that fight and I was like 17 years old, 16 years old. I think I was 16. And uh, you know, I've known who DJ is for a very long time since the WEC days. And then once they introduced the flyweight division, I believe I was like around 17. And I was like, you know what? That's what I, this is what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna be, you know, I'm gonna be the guy to do it. And uh, it's, it's just amazing to me that all these people that I've watched growing up and you know never really realizing that I'm gonna fight them one day is actually happened. And does that just amaze you right now? It's it's so crazy, man. It's it's amazing to me just because it really shows that you know I, everything I did, everything I sacrificed, really was for a purpose, and it's all gonna pay off in September. It's all been for a purpose. It's been a short ride here <laughs> with the Jackson Wink team. Do you feel that you guys know each other well enough to take on such a big challenge as DJ? I really do, man. Me and Greg have clicked a lot. Um, you know, we've been really, uh, you know, brainstorming together, combining our strategies together. Not only that, you know, me and Winkle John work, you know, daily. And, you know, a big person in my camp that, you know, has been the most welcoming to me more than anybody and has kind of been become my right hand man is Brandon Gibson. You know, he's a uh, he's my guy, he's my main guy and it's uh, it's been amazing to have the whole Jackson's crew, you know, welcome me with open arms and be behind me, you know, with this task. The internet's full of idiots and hate. With the biggest fight of your career ahead of you, do you kinda go on a, a internet blackout, kinda stay away from social media? Yeah, you know, I go on an internet blackout or anything blackout during fight camp and, you know, anyways, I don't have time for all that, but, you know, uh, there was a couple times where I got really bored and I was, like, seeing what they were saying and I trolled them back and, you know, people don't know I'm a great troll on, on Twitter, so, so you know, I kind of stuck some of those guys, but other than that, you know, it's, people aren't in our shoes, you know, me and my wrestling coach Dan were talking about it today. We went around the Hill of Tears with Greg, and there was a couple moments where you had to push yourself so hard that you wanted to die inside, and you wanted to throw up, and it made you realize that most Americans have never even felt anything like that, much less a fight, so, you know, who the hell are they to know what they're talking about? The fight, that, that's the easy thing. You're used to me asking you questions. So there's going to be a million cameras on you in a couple weeks. Does that feel like a strange thought to process? Mm, not really. That kind of stuff, super, that's actually easy for me. I mean, that kind of stuff, just it's all mental. You know, It's all how you can mentally handle it. If you get starstruck by it, then you know it's going to leave for a bad night or a bad week, whatever it may be. But you know, all that's just mental crap. I mean, if you can't do an interview or if you can't have a bunch of cameras in your face, you know, you're probably not going to do well with punches in your face, you know, so it's just all mental. It's easy. It's cool. You know, I enjoy it. It's fun for me. Excited for that first UFC Open workout? I am, man. I am. You know, it, even the countdown show, you know, um, it's it hasn't been so much being starstruck by the moment, but more of taking it in just because I've always watched countdown shows. I've always you know, seeing the embeddeds. I've always seen the open workouts. I've never been a part of them. So it's more of a blessing for me to be a part of them. And it's uh, it's amazing. And I'm just enjoying it and taking every moment in. And how much uh, has the team and their advice helped you out? Because many title fights, many embedded shows, many of those little other things outside of we know you can fight. How much has the team and their experience been a benefit that's to you? A, that's, that's the great part about having this team behind me is that everyone, you know, everyone here has experienced. I mean, Greg... God, that guy's got countless experience in title fights, big time fights, same with Wing, same with Brandon. So being able to have them on my side during this moment is great because they know how to stay level headed, I know how to stay level headed. You know, it's just gonna make for a great week, a uh, great camp, you know. Bruce Buffer says, and new flyweight champion of the world. What's that gonna mean to you? I mean, it's gonna mean more to me what people know. That's why I feel like I'm gonna win this fight. Is this fight means more to me than more people than anyone will ever know. It's something that I have. This is all I know. Fighting is all I can know. You know, I'm in the process of learning you know, business stuff, so that way you know I have a, a a good thing to fall back on after this whole fighting thing. You know, kick the body's ass. But uh, you know, it's just it's 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 gonna be amazing. You know, it's something that I've done so much for. You know lost relationships, lost friends, you know, lost so much during this journey. And it's all going to be for purpose and it's all going to be for a reason in September. Ray Borg, do you have anybody you need to thank or shout out to? Um, I'd just really like to thank my sponsors uh, that stuck with me since day one. Damage Control, Classic Barbershop, um, Trent Cotney, 
um, my team, Jackson Wink, you know, anybody who's been on the journey from the get-go, you know, Frank Baca, Tim Sosa, all my, all my familia, and um, we're going to go and get this. Time to shock the world. Uh, yeah.